this would be a 1981 Fiat X19. That's the model, but that was also the code name when they were designing these cars. When it was prototyped, oh, they had cool. ne never actually named the car. I used to know what the whole thing means, but I know the nine is the ninth design. How long have you had it? I've had this car since 2016, I believe. I bought it off of the second owner that bought it used in 1985. And it was a garage baby, and it's got 40,000 original miles on it. No kidding. So what's in it? It has a 1.5 liter that produces a whopping 75 horsepower. And it weighs 1,900 pounds, right. I think. I don't know the exact weight, but it's like. <laughs> yeah, so the balance is probably pretty awesome. On it, oh, and it's mid-engine. I've actually been a fan of these cars since I was a kid. I have a friend of mine in high school that had one. Plus, I even have a picture of me standing in front of the local Fiat dealership. I'm about five or six years old in front of two brand new X19s. Like back when you used to fit in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when my head didn't have to stick out the roof. And you mentioned earlier before we started recording that the top never goes on it for two reasons. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a summer car and, and I'm, how tall? And I'm 6'2", so I'm a, little, I'm a little tall for the car. You can still drive it with the, with the top on, just not as comfortable. That's Correct. Down the seat right? Yeah, I, I've, I've driven with the top on. It's not a big deal. How's your leg room? Fine. So leg, leg room is no problem. Walk me around it a little bit. Have you done anything to it or is it pretty much bone stock? No, I uh, actually just did some mods to it last year. There is a Fiat specialist in Beaver Falls named Buffo Motors. They were actually a Fiat dealer when the cars were new. I had gotten a uh, big valve head cam and a downpipe from Midwest Bayless in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and they installed everything for me. So you probably got a little bump from that. Yeah, we're es I'm estimating the horsepower from the stock 75 is probably 25 horsepower, which I know doesn't sound like much. That's a huge amount. It's a huge when, amount. When you're starting with 75? It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. And you can feel the difference. When I'm whining through the gears, you can definitely feel the difference. The exhaust was already on the car when I bought it okay. and I wanted to keep that style exhaust because it's very retro yep. I didn't want to go to a more modern exhaust even though I'm probably robbing a little bit of power from the car but it's so aesthetically perfect for the car so I would imagine front is all trunk then front is all trunk so you can actually take things in your car depends Small things well that depends if you want to take the roof you have space below the roof you'll sure. if you look down you can put stuff down there and I've done that and then put the roof back in this design came out in 74 and was in production as a Fiat up until 1982 until they pulled out of the U.S. If you know who Malcolm Bricklin is, who obviously made his own car, the Bricklin, he also brought Yugo to the U.S. and he also brought Subaru to the U.S. When Fiat stopped production of this car, he took over production and imported it as a, as a Bertone, cool. which is the design house that had designed the body. <laughs> These period correct stripes on the exterior is what sold me on this particular car. Yeah. I, I had been looking for one and I was like, that's screams 1970s <laughs> even though the car's an 81 that screams 70s and at some point i'm probably going to get the car resprayed just because it's got little nicks and dings all over it it's a nice driver it's not perfect and i've already told my body guy i want the stripes on the car it was already lowered when I bought the car. So uh, it is lowered? It is lowered. Oh, okay. Yeah, it has a set of pony shocks on it, and I can't remember the brand of springs that are on it, but it is it, it is lowered a tiny bit. I've gone through the car mechanically. It's a great little car. Not last year, but the year before. I mentioned Midwest Bayless out in Columbus, Ohio. They do an open house every year, so I decided to drive out to their open house. If I go to a show, I drive. I don't trailer. So I drove the car from my house to Columbus and back in two days with no issues. Temperature was great. It was straight in the middle the whole way, and I was cruising down Route 70 at 70, 80 miles an hour. No problem. So when you did your Columbus trip, did you have the, the roof in? Oh, oh, the roof was off the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no-brainer. <laughs> I was a little burnt when I got home in two days, yeah, but whatever. yeah, details. They made a couple changes over the years. In 79, they went to that bumper. They had real big ones. I think it was 75 to 78. They were called the ladder bumpers because they had like little slats in the middle. They're not very popular with owners. A lot of times the owners will actually switch them and put them back to the early bumpers. And it's been mentioned to me, but I like how you're in a small car. I want a little protection on the road. God forbid something happens. I do want that bumper. I do want that protection because even though they look better, I don't want to take that chance. The only option this car doesn't have, some of them did come with air conditioning other than that this is what you get <laughs> yeah and this one does not have air conditioning. this one does not have air Which? conditioning when the roof's off i got plenty of air i'm good do you know how many how many of this particular model they they made or brought to the states don't know how many they brought to the states but they made 150,000 of them from 74 to 89 some things are getting tough to come by when i had my other one i bought it with a cracked windshield not knowing that you can't find a windshield for oh, these cars wow. 
Luckily, I was able to find a guy semi-local that was about an hour away and he had a used windshield. So I was at least able to find one and fix the car. How many people mistake it for the Triumph? All the time. It has a very 70s Roadster feel to it, which you have the Triumphs, the MGs, and Bertoni is a design house. They've made some very, very nice designs. You can see some design cues on certain things that, that actually come from other cars. The door handles are used on, I think, a couple of the Ferrari models. If I open the door, this little lever here to release the back trunk and the engine compartment uh, that is exactly the same as a Lamborghini Countach with one difference the Fiat one locks so uh, apparently they don't feel that anybody's going to steal the engine out of your Lamborghini but they might steal yeah. your engine out of your Fiat <laughs> It's easier to carry. Yeah, if you're familiar with the Pontiac Friera, a lot of design cues on this car were used in the Pontiac Friera also. I have a friend of mine that has one, so we've compared. Oh, I will show you something pretty neat too. This is your, obviously your, your gas filler. Something that I noticed when I got it, the um, threads are on the inside. It's usually the other way. Oh yeah. It's just different. Tail lights, do they look familiar to you at all? Oh, well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> With a very early Lotus Esprit. Same exact tail lights. Uh, gotcha. I, think it's, I want to say it's like 74, 75. So I, I noticed it's got the pop up yes. headlights. The night I was telling you about when I got stuck in the rain and I had to rush and put the top on, I also couldn't see because I'm still using 1980s headlights. <laughs> I have since updated the headlights to LEDs. One of the other nice things is a lot of the uh, restoration stuff, a lot of that is still available, like badges and lettering and all that kind oh, of yeah. stuff. So a lot of that kind of stuff is still available. At some point, it's going to get a full respray. I nitpick the car because you do it with your own car all the time. If you look closely, there's on the, the deck lid versus the quarters, there's a little difference in color. So it's, mm -hmm. it's either been hit or sprayed there at some point, but it's a very nice car for what it is. What do you like most about it? <laughs> it's just a fun all-around car. It, it's, it's cheap fun. These cars aren't overly expensive they are appreciating in value when i bought this car i paid fifty five hundred dollars for this car wow yeah you can't do that anymore unfortunately no. this same car in this condition is probably 10 to 12 now but still what are you buying for ten thousand dollars and you got a lot of fun in this car you got 13 inch wheels tires are cheap when you find them i like weird and odd and different people either appreciate it or they don't understand it and I go by the analogy that I saw a sticker on a car at a car show once, and it said, if I have to explain it, you won't understand.